Welcome to Bio 205 Microbiology at Pima Community College. In this video, we're going to demo how to perform a streak plate inoculation. Before you begin, you want to make sure you have all your supplies ready to go. We have our Bunsen burner lit and ready, a Petri plate that we're going to inoculate. We're going to work today with a mixed culture of bacteria in a broth, a rack, and our inoculating group. Using a Sharpie, I'm going to label the plate as follows. I'm going to first draw the shape of a T that's going to indicate the different zones on my Petri plate. I also want to make sure that on my Petri plate I label my name, today's date, the type of Petri plate I'm working with, in this case this one is called DLA, we'll learn about this later, the type of bacteria or organism I'm working with, in this case there's three different types, so I'm going to write mixed culture. And in some cases you can indicate the temperature you're going to incubate at. For us, we're going to use 37 degrees Celsius. Notice that I'm going to label my plate around the edge as to not obstruct my view in the center of the Petri plate. Once labeled, I'm going to sterilize my loop by placing it through the inner cone until the entire length of my wire turns bright orange. I'm going to allow my loop to cool. Remember, we don't place it on our glove or our skin. We don't cool it by blowing on it and we're not going to wave it around. After allowing it to cool, for a few seconds, pick up the test tube containing the mixed culture. We're now going to remove the cap with my little finger from my dominant hand, pass it through my flame. Remember, we have to vortex our tubes before starting. This one has already been vortexed. Reflame the opening, cap, and place down. I'm now going to pick up the Petri plate. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to demonstrate by picking it up. I'm going to rub the culture all over the top of the tea called zone one. In this case, I'm not worrying about separating my lines, my zigzags, I'm just rubbing it all over that first zone. Place it down. It's really critical that you don't go back into your culture. So I'm going to move the culture out of my field of view. I'm not dipping back in. I also want to make sure that I now sterilize my loop before streaking the bacteria on my Petri plate. Remember, the focus here is to physically move the bacteria from the Petri plate through this, the second and the third zones. And so I don't want to introduce more cells from my loop, and that's why I'm going to sterilize it once more. Allow it to cool. I typically like to hold the loop close to the Bunsen burner. Many microbiologists will touch the loop on a, on a clean portion of the Petri plate by tapping it down, making sure they don't hear a sizzle making sure they don't melt the auger. Once you're sure that it's cool, you're now going to physically touch down into the first zone where you place the bacteria, and you're gonna begin streaking back and forth. You have a lot of surface area to work with, so the more you streak back and forth, the better. We'll show you what the final result looks like afterwards. Place it on the lid, and one more time, we're going to sterilize our inoculating loop. Allow it to cool. Remember, we're not double dipping back into our broth. 
And now it's really important, I'm not going back into this first zone. Now I'm gonna grab the bacteria from zone number two, and I'm gonna streak it into this last zone that's now empty. Touch it down onto the auger to cool the loop if you wish. Grab into zone two, maybe two or three times. And then again, streak back and forth, taking up all of your surface area. Make sure you're not dipping back into zone one. Be sure to sterilize your loop one final time before, before putting it away into your kit. And that's how we perform a standard streak plate. There are different forms of this that are floating around, sometimes four quadrants, etc. Um, but this is how we do it at Pima Community College.